I don't know if you know that much about them. Exactly. All right, we are live, comrades. So, Huru. 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 Huru, comrades, and welcome to today's Amali <coughs> study featuring Chairman Amalia Shatella. My name is Akile Anai, Director of Agitation and Propaganda for the African People's Socialist Party, as well as your MC for this morning. Today's study is highly important, and we encourage you right now to invite your friends and family to it. And as you can see, we have a lineup of not just guests, but the leadership of our party and Uhuru movement. We are kicking off a series where we will be showcasing the practical work of our party tied to the theory of African internationalism. We have over the last few weeks been discussing the importance to unite theory with practice. And we in the party have a saying, it's not what we say, it's what we do. This week, we will start showcasing the African social, we will start with showcasing the African Socialist International, the African People's Socialist Party writ large. You will see and hear from the leadership of our party with presentations from Chairman Amalia Shatella, ASI Secretary General Louise Kinshasa, located in London, Tafari Mugheri, chairman of the African People's Socialist Party occupied Azania, and Alex Morley, chairman of the African People's Socialist Party Bahamas. There are some guiding study documents, including the manifesto of the African Socialist International, as well as pages 43 through 54 of Vanguard, the advanced attachment of the African Revolution, the political report to the Seventh Congress, which can be found in the video description. There will be discussion and questions and an opportunity for you to engage with the leadership of our party. It's my honor now to introduce our leadership, the leader of the African nation and worldwide African revolution, our chairman, Omali Shatella, Uhuru chairman. Uhuru. Comrade Akile, I want to welcome uh, all of the members of the party and the Uhuru movement and other people uh, who join us uh, in these studies that we do every Sunday. Uh, since uh, 2018 in October, when we had uh, our seventh Congress, we have spent most of our time with these studies discussing the political report. We spent the first uh, four months prior to the Congress discussing the political report so that people would have been able uh, to come to the Congress, uh, prepare to struggle around any issue. Uh, they would have been able uh, to work and build the resolutions from the different committees and the different regions that uh, they uh, represent uh, for uh, uh, be, to be able to, be, to present those uh, resolutions uh, to the Congress uh, for adoption by the whole party. And uh, we feel like it's really important to concentrate on this discussion around uh, the uh, political report, because that's what informs our work. That was our five-year uh, plan uh, was laid out in this political report. And, uh, and it's what guides our work until uh, uh, each of the plenaries that we have uh, annually uh, between, uh, within the five-year period of the Congress and then between Congresses. So it's been appropriate that we should do that. Our objective uh, has been, again, to uh, stay on task, to keep our whole membership, the entire party and the world uh, aware of what it is that we are doing and to be able uh, to make judgments about whether or not we're holding uh, true uh, to, uh, the man, uh, to the re political report itself, which is the main resolution of the Congress and to the various uh, resolutions and mandates that come from, uh, from the Congress. So that's what we've been doing. And uh, what we have stated, uh, especially uh, at our seventh Congress, uh, is the need for members of our party to recognize uh, the role that we have as Vanguard. And this is something that people in the party, our movement, and others who have been uh, watching our party uh, has been, uh, have been aware of. So we want to uh, uh, move beyond that because there are different organizations out in the world who do things uh, sometimes. We say uh, that it's not who we say we are, it's what we do. And that's true. Uh, but we do things based on uh, a philosophy, based on a strategy that we've developed to win the liberation of our people and in the context of solving the problems of the revolution itself. And uh, so uh, there are other personalities and groups that do things. The people uh, who, for example, uh, collect clothing and give uh, to the poor or food and give to the poor. 
and people would sweep the streets and do other kinds of things in the name of the revolution, et cetera. Uh, people who uh, do uh, 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 schools uh, for the children, et cetera. Uh, and, uh, and what we are seeing is, and people who do protests, uh, people who are very good at protesting, et cetera. And so uh, those are, everything I just mentioned are some of the things that we may do, but we are not those things. We have uh, more than 50 uh, um, uh, economic institutions, for example, uh, but we are not uh, Uhuru Fools and Pies. We are not Uhuru Friendship and Collectibles. We are not Zenzele. Uh, we are not uh, 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 the various uh, uh, shops and institutions that we have created. We are much more than that. And all of the institutions I just mentioned relate to uh, the overall need to conquer political power uh, for African people to destroy uh, the ability of our oppressors, existing oppressors, and any oppressor that might rear its head to be able to affect the lives and conditions of existence of African people. That's what, that's what we are about as an organization. And we've created various uh, organizations and committees and things like that to facilitate uh, our uh, objective of, of uh, negating uh, the influence, the power of our colonizers and the capitalist system itself uh, that rests upon the colonial condi our colonial conditions and uh, for the purpose of, uh, of winning the liberation of our people, the unification of our Africa uh, and our people globally. So that's what we've been about. And what we want to do with this, these studies now is to take it beyond what may be perceived and experienced by a lot of people as a kind of abstract thing uh, that uh, individually can be compared to any individual uh, activity that any other organization may be involved in. I want to try to present to people in the party, in our movement, in the world, uh, a complete picture, more or less, of who we are. And the fact is that there are human beings who represent this international organization uh, and who provide leadership on different fronts and different uh, committees uh, and different institutions that we've created. That these are part of one system uh, with the objective ultimately of winning political power, uh, taking back our Africa, liberating our Africa, uniting Africa and African people around the world. That's what it's about. And so even though you may go to Zenzale in Huntsville, Alabama, or you may uh, secure something uh, from the shop in Philadelphia or the shop in Oakland, California, or from uh, some other institution that we've created. Uh, the, the thing is that all of these are part of one whole uh, that's uh, moving us on a trajectory to win our freedom, to win our liberation, uh, and to uh, facilitate uh, the advent of a socialist world where the peoples and toiling masses of the world can be free. We have in this party resolved some of the fundamental contradictions uh, that have confronted our revolution, uh, especially since the uh, destruction of the, of the Garvey movement by the enemies of our revolution that include the United States government and various other opportunists that live and exist inside the African community itself, such as W.E.B. Du Bois, for example. He's one of the outstanding persons that we know, uh, but there was also, uh, there have also uh, been others uh, in other parts of the world who conspired and worked with our enemies to maintain this uh, state that uh, African people are confronted with now. So we uh, intend to expose to you, uh, members of my party and other people who are watching this, our movement, the African People's Socialist Party writ large, beyond just the studies that I have been conducting on a regular basis and reading from the various documents, but the documents will speak for themselves in the form of the people who lead this work, uh, who have participated in, this, in, in, in uh, constructing uh, the reality that the party represents. I want to just, uh, this has not uh, been put forth as a part of the document, but I want to just look at the uh, uh, the political report to the Sixth Congress, uh, uh, An Uneasy Equilibrium, and just read uh, briefly from that, uh, because it says something about, again, who we are. And it reads, The Extraordinary Journey of the African People's Socialist Party began nearly 42 years ago in St. Petersburg, Florida. This was in 2013, was it? Or was it 2013? Uh, so, uh, um, and 42 years ago, 2013, so that's uh, what, uh, 50, almost, uh, what, how many years ago was that? Anyway, <laughs> it uh, is fitting that this journey uh, celebrated 
with our party's sixth Congress was launched during the process of African liber of, of building the first African Liberation Day mobilization in Washington, D.C., held in May 27, 1962. By the way, that was the first African Liberation Day mobilization held in the world. Uh, and, uh, and I'm speaking of the ALD now. Uh, I'm speaking of the ALD that was a consequence of the 1963 uh, meeting that happened in Addis Ababa, uh, Ethiopia, uh, where uh, uh, this resolution was passed to establish ALD. I'm not speaking of the historic uh, uh, meeting that uh, was held in 1958 in Accra, Ghana uh, uh, by uh, uh, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, uh, Nkrumah. Throughout our history, we have all often emphasized the significance of the African People's Socialist Party. But today we are clear that at no time has the existence of our party been more important and urgently needed than it is now. Not only is building the party a crucial task of our organization, it is also the fundamental task of the African revolution as a whole at this critical historical juncture. Uh, then we say that uh, the African People's Socialist Party was founded uh, in the wake of the crushing military defeat of the African Revolution in Africa, within the US and worldwide. It was a period when the US government was confident its years long efforts to wipe out our struggle for liberation had been successful. The US government's bloody wave, wave of political repression in the 60s left some of our most outstanding leaders imprisoned, overthrown, murdered, or murdered. As a result, our movement's most significant organizations were enfeebled or destroyed. Nevertheless, even as an era of struggle was being brutally brought to a close and the dreams of freedom and happiness of millions of our people were being subordinated to the whims of imperialism, another era was being born with the founding of our party. That era is now fully upon us. We have defined this era as the final offensive against imperialism. So that's that comes from our political report to the Sixth Congress, just a, an excerpt, but it just makes a statement about how the party must be perceived, certainly by our membership and our movement and certainly how we perceived it. And this is something that was united on by the Congress in terms of what I've just described. Um, I also wanna say that uh, at the first Congress of our party, which occurred, uh, in 1981 uh, uh, in Oakland, California, um, we passed a resolution that is really significant to what it is we're about to do uh, with this discussion, this study today. And to excerpt from this resolution, it's the resolution of the African People's Socialist Party on the African Socialist International adopted at the first Congress of the African People's Socialist Party, Oakland, California, September, 1981. This is a document that's available on APSPUhuru.org. Uh, For several hundred years now, African people have had to, and it's important because what we are doing here is establishing the fact that we are not just a group out here just doing things, but uh, what we do uh, is informed by revolutionary uh, theory, by political theory that we have worked uh, to uh, uh, develop over a period of time. And in fact, this is a scientifically founded uh, revolutionary theory. Let me uh, just uh, make this, read this, because uh, I think it's important uh, about who we are, because we're African internationalism. We don't want to be confused uh, with a lot of what we see happening around uh, the world and, and uh, with different organizations that, have, that has had a lot of stuff that has, that's happened uh, historically. Uh, we start here like on page 65 on an uneasy equilibrium, the theory of African internationalism, just to say who we are. We say uh, using the collective experience of African people as a starting place, we were able to use the science of dialectical materialism, dialectical and historical materialism, cleansing it of its Marxist metaphysics and idealism to investigate and analyze our relationship to the world. For us, the rise of capitalism in the world is not based on some purely abstract Marxist theory about the development of human society. It is not a theoretical question. Primitive accumulation is not a theory. The rape of Africa, the enslavement of our continent and our people, the forcible dispersal of Africans throughout the world as a means of rescuing Europe from disease and poverty 
The process that gave rise to capitalism is a matter of historical record. Marx, the spectator, did not have to understand this. The person sitting on the hot stove, the living, breathing, thinking, primitive accumulation would either understand this question or perish. We chose to understand. More than that, we chose to develop a worldview stemming from this understanding. This is the origin of African internationalism. And then we say African internationalism is simply the worldview stemming from a historical materialist investigation and analysis of the world with the starting point being the experience and role of Africans and Africa in the advent of capitalist imperialism as the rise of white power. Uh, uh, parasitic capitalism is the real issue. It is this reality that ultimately distinguishes African internationalist socialism from the struggle for white rights that's usually characterized, uh, that usually characterizes most most movements of Europeans worldwide. It is the difference in socialism resulting from overturning the pedestal upon which all capitalist activity occurs, which is colonialism, and some variation of the national socialism achieved by the infamous Nazis of Germany. So uh, this is uh, something that's important for us to establish as well that we are a political organization extraordinarily active in many places around the world and growing exponentially throughout the world, actively engaged in building this revolutionary movement with the objective of not only winning the freedom and unity of Africa and African people around the world, but recognizing this struggle for the liberation of and unification of African and African people is fundamental, is the critical ingredient necessary for the destruction of capitalism as a social system and the rise of, of, of socialism, uh, give, providing uh, the, the real opportunity for socialism as a world system to come into existence. This is because what has happened to Africa and African people, our dispersal around the world, our location uh, on the continent of Africa, where much of the wealth of the world, resources, natural resources, uh, much of that is concentrated on the first place and all of the imperialist powers are, and would be imperialists are in Africa, going to Africa, trying to get to Africa to suck those resources. And then of course, African people scattered around the world at gunpoint. We are in the Americas. We, we are all over the America. We are in Europe. We're all over Africa and various other places that places us in strategic locations uh, that's hooked up by an African socialist international that gives the ability for the socialist revolution to finally emerge as a world economy for a world, uh, the ability to build a world economy. That's not existed before. Uh, so that's part of what makes us significant. So, and in 1981, uh, the resolution of the African People's Socialist Party on the African Socialist International adopted at the first Congress uh, in September. I want to just read an excerpt from this. Uh, for several hundred years now, African people have had to endure the worst possible forms of political oppression, economic exploitation. This oppression and exploitation have their origin in the brutal attack on Africa by European bandits and merchants who, who initiated the capture and sale of black men, women, and children into slavery throughout the Americas and the Western world. I want to pay careful attention because I didn't mention the boogeyman one time here. I didn't say a single thing in this process about the white man being the devil and we have to get rid of the devil or some, uh, um, some um, mutation that we are engaged in struggling. The reality is there's a scientific, uh, mat historical materialist based analysis that's associated with everything that we put forth in terms of winning our liberation. And I think that's really important for us to remember comrades and uh, to be able to take out into the world. So we say these bandits and merchants captured the continent of Africa itself, the national homeland of all black people. They divided Africa into illegitimate geographical state territories, which facilitated foreign political domination and frustrated the distort and distorted the process of achieving national consolidation. This assault on Africa created new exploitative economic structures which have resulted in the massive transfer of human and material resources from Africa and African people to the centers of the imperialist empire led by US imperialism. This oppression and exploitation of Africa and African people gave birth to the world economy and the international capitalist system, 
which is most in its most developed form is known as imperialism and is led by the US. It is this system of imperialism built and developed off the blood, sweat and liberty of African people which is responsible for the underpopulation, grinding poverty and underdevelopment of Africa. This system is also responsible for African people being oppressed and exploited throughout the world, dominated by foreigners, aliens and capitalism and prevented from achieving national liberation and the consolidation of our national identity and nationality itself. Today, Africa is a center of political turmoil and turbulence as African people in one place after the other are throwing off the chains of oppression. African people are struggling to break the exploitative economic structures developed off those which were created during the slave trade and the colonization of Africa. The struggle in Africa is also creating turmoil within the centers of world capitalism led by US imperialism. This struggle is part and parcel of the leading force in history today, the force of the ascendancy of the slave the struggles of the world's peoples to throw off colonialism, neo-colonialism and economic dependency. The struggle to throw off colonialism, neo-colonialism and economic dependency represent the most serious threat to imperialist domination and economic exploitation of all the workers and toiling masses of the world. The anti-colonial struggles represent a direct attack on the economic and political structures necessary for the very existence of the oppressive and exploitative system of imperialism. These structures have their origin in the slave trade, uh, the colonization of Africa and the dispersal of African people throughout the world. So this is excerpt I wanted to read. And again, the part of what we're doing now is uh, demonstrating that uh, our, our, our organizing, our, our worldview is scientific. It's based on a scientific analysis of our reality that, uh, uh, that we call African internationalism. And then 18 years later, when we worked, this is from 1981, we had even begun the process of, uh, of uh, building, uh, working to construct the ASI much earlier than that. But 18 years after this, uh, in uh, the living room of Comrade Louisa Kinshasa uh, in, in 2000 and, and 20, April 2000, 2000 uh, April 2000, uh, we, uh, 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 wrote this manifesto of the African Socialist International. And it reads, African people throughout the world are rising up. We have entered into the new millennium in motion, struggling to overturn the 500 year legacy of oppressive and exploitation of oppression and exploitation to which we have been subjected by a parasitic social system born at our expense. We are fighting to reclaim our destiny as a single people whose forced dispersal in a world defined by artificial borders has served to undermine our, and our common identity and dilute our collective strength. We are everywhere. We are in Chicago, Illinois, in Florida, Texas, California, New York, and throughout the United States and North America, as well as Toronto and Montreal in Canada. We are in Brasilia in Brazil, Caracas in Venezuela, Bluefields in Nicaragua, in Central and South America. We are in Trinidad, Haiti, Jamaica, Guadalupe, Martinique, Dominica, the Bahamas, uh, Cuba, Puerto Rico, the Dominican Republic, Barbados, and all the islands of the Caribbean. We are in London, Birmingham, Manchester, Liverpool, and Nottingham in England. We are in Paris, Lille, Lyon, uh, Marseille, and Nice in France. We are in Brussels, Belgium, Amsterdam, Holland, Berlin, Germany, Rome, Italy, as well as Spain, Portugal, Russia, Turkey, and all of Eastern Europe. We reside in the hundreds of millions in our ancient motherland, which was the birthplace of humankind more than 150,000 years ago, and which served as the cradle of human civilization more than 10,000 years ago. The life and historical experience of our people over the last 500 years constitute the primary force that has given shape to the modern world. It is a world where the vast majority of the people on the planet Earth are living in starvation, misery, disease, ignorance, and terror. All at the same time, Europe and North America control the world's wealth at gunpoint and rest upon the prostate, blooded, and abscessed backs of the workers and peasants of Africa, Asia, and Latin America. The world capitalist economy began with Europe's assault 
on our Africa and the kidnapping, captivity, colonial enslavement and dispersal of African people throughout what is now known as the Americas. The barbaric, the barbaric assault upon African people depopulated our motherland of hundreds of millions of human beings. It destroyed our ancient civilization and unleashed Europeans, a European wave of mass murder that killed hundreds of millions of human beings through slave raiding wars. It left a trail of human carnage over the middle passage of the Atlantic Ocean and condemned the captive African people of the Americas to death through torture miserable toil and cultural annihilation. This initial assault upon Africa, along with the genocidal extermination of the indigenous peoples of the Americas and the looting of Asia and the Middle East lifted Europe out of millennia of disease, poverty, fratricidal warfare and mass murder. Europe's militarism and aggression was a part of a culture whose economic base was built upon warfare and conquests between competing European tribes and kingdoms. I want to read that sentence again, uh, because we're now talking about a superstructure that was forged through a parasitic uh, economic base. Europe's militarism and aggression was part of a culture whose economic base was built upon warfare and conquest between competing European tribes and kingdoms. Before this, there was no concept of Europe or white people as a monolithic group. Europe's nation states and continental unity were forged through its assault upon the world's peoples. This unity was consolidated through the conquest, invasion, enslavement of the peoples of Asia and the carving up of the African continent by European colonial powers in the 19th century. Today, one billion African people throughout the world are engaged in a desperate struggle for survival within a world whose economic foundation were built through the theft of our labor and resources. African people comprise half of the world's population that live on less than $2 a day. We are subjected to genocidal biological warfare through the use of AIDS, Ebola, and other often curable diseases, some of which have been manufactured for our destruction. We're writing this, we're writing this uh, 20 years ago. Uh, Today, our motherland is undergoing a frenzy of rape and looting more intense and insidious than slavery. This takes the form of trade and so-called debt, which brings development to Europe, North America, and increasingly Japan, and we could add now China, while it commits mass murder against our people through artificial famine and the transformation of our homeland into an economic wasteland. However, we continue to struggle and we will win the historical experience of African people throughout the world has forged our people into a revolutionary nation comprised primarily of workers and poor peasants. We continue to, to form the critical army of labor for, the, for world imperialism in the mines of Congo, South Africa, and Zambia, in the plantations and farms of Ghana, the Ivory Coast, the Caribbean, and the factories of Detroit, Manchester, Leon, and Brussels, as well as hundreds of prison dungeons throughout the world, including those that hold one million African people captive in the United States of North America. Included among the, this mass force of African workers are the hundreds of millions of unemployed African laborers who constitute a massive reserve of, of labor pool for imperialism. Hunger and starvation are used as weapons of economic warfare aimed at suppressing the value of African labor power. Moreover, this labor force is to work day and night and to migrate from country to country and continent to continent just to eat. The laws that govern nature and the entire universe necessitates life and death and determine the rise of the new and the vanquishing of the old in an infinitely unfolding struggle between opposing forces. In the same way, we know that the resurrection of Africa and African people is inevitable and it cannot be stopped. The liberation of Africa will be brought about through the coming worldwide upheaval of African workers and poor peasants, a sleeping giant poised to seize our freedom, happiness, and wealth from imperialist white power and deal it the death blow of the world's people 
are awaiting Africa to strike. While our Africa has been formally freed from direct colonial rule and European domination, it suffers from an oppressive system that in fact maintains the domination of its former masters, often in partnership with a consortium of imperialist economic and financial interests based in the United States, Europe, and Japan. During the 1950s and 60s, a mass revolutionary upsurge took the world by storm. This revolutionary motion was many times expressed in the mobilization of armed African workers and peasant resistance in Africa. African people forever defeated the tyranny of direct white colonial rule and domination. However, our victory was incomplete for our movement succeeded only in defeating the open imperialist rule known as colonialism. The hidden indirect rule of imperialist rule form the hidden indirect form of imperialist rule called neo-colonialism by Kwame Nkrumah has reduced Africa and her people to a state of destitution and desperation not seen since the destruction and genocide and mass murder of the slave trade or the colonial wars of conquest by Europe during the late 19th century. <clears throat> the agents of neo-colonialism, the extension of enemy power into the ranks of our own nation throughout the world, take the form of the African primitive petty bourgeoisie. This tiny social class holds Africa in captivity in the servitude of, in the service of imperialism and serves as a cover for the continued white rule and domination. This class sees the fate of Africa and African people as forever under the subjugation of white people. It has secured its own position of prestige and prosperity as collaborators with imperialism, which continues to control Africa's resource and loot, and loot Africa's wealth. The African primitive petty bourgeoisie therefore has no interest in Africa's liberation and unification or the emancipation of the hundreds of millions of African workers and, and peasants from famine and backbreaking toil. The mighty awakening African workers and poor peasants has unleashed convulsions throughout the continent through the toppling of Mobutu, the retreat of French imperialism, the upheaval uh, uh, and rebellions throughout Zimbabwe, Nigeria, the Central African Republic, Ivory Coast, Kenya, as well as St. Petersburg, Florida. The rising up of African workers has Africa's neo-colonial traders and collaborators trembling in their boots. It is the workers and poor peasants who will overthrow the oppressive power of the African petty bourgeois that the Af petty bourgeoisie holds over Africa in partnership with imperialism. This awakening will con constitute an African revolution that will consolidate our national consciousness, culture, and identity through mass struggle on an international scale. It will constitute the final offensive against imperialism and white power, which will have nowhere left to run as the oppressed hundreds of millions of African workers and poor workers and poor peasants consciously pursue our historic mission of the total unification of the African continent and African people throughout the world. Never again will we allow people to be slaves or to be divided by languages, ethnic groupings, false borders, or false micronationalities. This awakening African people stand at the vanguard of the struggle of the world's oppressed people to build a new world in which to currently endured humiliation, famine, terror, and disease comes, becomes a distant faded memory. We believe that it is only fitting that the people who gave birth to world civilization and who are the primary victims of the barbarism that has established hegemony throughout the world take responsibility for leading the struggle for liberation of the majority of the planet from the tyranny and despotism of US-led world imperialism. Brothers and sisters, the hour of African redemption which the great Marcus Garvey so prophetically envisioned many years ago is upon us. We must build the African Socialist International and unite our dispersed, oppressed, and one billion strong African nation under the slogan, touch one, touch all. We must build the ASI under the leadership of the African workers aligned with the poor peasantry, for it is they who are the creators of social wealth and value. It is they who are the only social force capable of waging our liberation struggle to its victorious conclusion. African workers and peasants must assume the leadership of our society as a condition for our freedom. So that is the manifesto of the African Socialist International, again, written and in and, 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 and the living room, Comrade Louise, Secretary Comrade Louise <laughs> Kinshasa in London in 2000 and presented to 
uh, the ASI uh, conference that was held uh, in London uh, in April of that same year. So uh, I wanted to put this forward to lay a kind of foundation, uh, ideological, political foundation, uh, historical foundation uh, for what it is we do as a party, for our worldview, for people to see that we in Huntsville, the struggle in Huntsville is directly is connected to the struggle uh, in right there uh, in folk in folk folkville uh, in in folksville uh, uh, in what they call South Africa uh, is connected uh, to the struggle that we are engaged in in Saint Petersburg, Florida, and 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 in London, England, and various other places where Africans have been dispersed to the Bahamas, etc. Is one struggle, and that's a really important point that we want to make. This is what has informed all the work that we've been doing. This has informed uh, our understanding that we have to have national liberation. We have to have our own independent political economy. That's what was wiped out in the attack, when the attack on Africa. Uh, and that's what we are doing on a regular basis. The other thing I want to mention, and part of this is an explanation uh, for the forces who are participating uh, in this, uh, uh, this uh, study on today, is that we took on and we will have uh, discussions about this moving forward for the next uh, two or three weeks. Uh, every outstanding issue that confronted the African Revolution that has historically confronted the African Revolution, and certainly that has confronted the African Revolution since the defeat of that revolution in the 1960s. There were outstanding questions that did not get resolved. Uh, and it didn't get resolved because the revolution was crushed. I mean, Nkrumah was overthrown and I believe murdered. Lumumba was overthrown and murdered, butchered. Uh, uh, Shay was killed and you know, various people around the world uh, in the United States, Malcolm X, King, all these people destroyed and what have you. And then what fell into place uh, as, a, uh, as a result of this counterinsurgency, this attack on the revolutionary process that was happening globally, uh, what fell into place, what was put into place were stooges and quislings and people who served imperialism and not our people. And so we've had the situation where the African People's Socialist Party which was born at the very moment that they had assumed that the black revolution uh, was destroyed. Uh, at the very moment, uh, uh, the African People's Socialist Party uh, was uh, coming into existence, was rising uh, from the ashes of defeat. And so all of the questions that were presumed uh, to be unanswered were questions that we were dealing with as a consequence of still struggling to solve the problems of the revolution, which included the, struggle, the problem of our having been defeated militarily. There was an outstanding question, what about the white people? <laughs> and you know, for a while, the white people, and up to now, for many, the white people is the boogeyman. It's a, it's a, uh, I mean, even the people in our own party and movement uh, have had, uh, you know, succumbed uh, to this kind of philosophy because uh, it was clear that the white people, the white man, the white woman, the white babies, everybody uh, somehow uh, uh, benefited from what the hell was happening to us and celebrated the terror that was being waged uh, against African people. So what, how do we deal with that question? How is that confronted? Uh, and as I said, some had put forth the white man is the devil. Uh, some had said the white people are some kind of mutations, uh, uh, et cetera, but they offered really no scientific basis for how to struggle with this. Some say, well, hell, I don't care. They're just mad. And you know, uh, they just want to fight the white man uh, with, with uh, no to what end involved at all. You know, we identified those people a long time ago as what we call them is uh, the African slave syndrome. And I'm not saying that it was not intentionally that we put forth uh, this acronym, the acronym associated with the African slave syndrome. But anyway, you know, we saw this, I mean, the angry slave, I should say, syndrome. So people are mad, pissed off. So what you're going to do, you pissed off. So what the hell does that have to do with making revolution? And this, these are the problems that we had to solve. So the question of the white people had to be resolved and it's not good enough. Uh, and so either uh, the pendulum swung uh, uh, in two extreme ways. One, the white man was the devil to be aborted. The white man uh, uh, was a mutation and somehow, but it didn't tell us how to deal with the devil and how to deal mm -hmm. with the mutation. And then the other side was the white man is lovey-dovey. We're all in this together, et cetera, et cetera. Those were two extreme positions that were out there, neither of them uh, really made any sense at all. They couldn't stand the test of science. None, neither of those could stand the test of science. Mm -hmm. And nor could they stand the test of science in part because there were enemies in our own ranks. Now Mobutu was not white. Uh, uh, Duvalier uh, was not white in Haiti. 
uh, and all of the traitors in the neighborhoods and churches and things like that who betrayed the revolution over and over and over again were not white. So that was not a good enough explanation. We had to do better than that. And so we took, we took on the question of the white man. Some people say, well, now the black revolution has been defeated, destroyed. So we got to start all over again and go through a civil rights movement again. We say, but damn, if we have to start into a civil rights movement again, we say what has to happen is the African Revolutionary Party. The first time in history, the African working class has had its own revolutionary party. When I say the African working class, I don't mean the African, the black Negro working class, the black Brits working, I'm talking about the African working class has never in history had its own revolutionary political party before. So we create a political party. So we know that there are people at different stages of resistance, struggle, existence in the African world. So we don't say uh, uh, because the revolution was defeated or the vanguard was crushed or something like that. Now let's have another civil rights movement. We say no, unlike the 1960s when many of the people came uh, into political revolutionary conscious consciousness spontaneously through civil rights kinds of activities that existed all over the world, uh, what we say now is that we have a revolutionary political party that can open up and do democratic work, can do what people might call civil, civil rights work with the intent, with the conscious intent, seeing this as a part of the street, strategic process to bring the African people who need that experience into the revolution itself, to the revolutionary project, and the African revolution has to lead the struggle for democracy. The African revolutionaries have to lead the struggle for democracy, bringing African workers and peasants to a revolutionary conclusion, as opposed to building a new, a new civil rights movement. We have a revolutionary movement that take the people where they need to go from where they are. And that's what NPDM was a part of the International People's Democratic Uhuru Movement. Meet Africans where they are today under the leadership of a revolutionary party so that even non-revolutionary Africans can be brought into revolutionary participation through trying to deal with the issues that confront them on a daily basis as a part of being colonized under the leadership of the African People's Socialist Party, we bring them to revolution and mobilize the entire African working class. That's part of what it is that we do. So I've spoken enough uh, now. I'm sure that I've exhausted the time that was allocated to me. Uh, I'm sure I have. Uh, so I'm gonna stop now and turn it back over. Uh, and I wanna welcome all of the comrades who are here. Uh, uh, and again, you are the face of the party. People need to know you're out there churning away, <laughs> doing what you do to make the entire engine of the African People's Socialist Party, the African Revolution, uh, and the struggle for the liberation of the African nation. You are the ones that keep it running. So people need to see that and see what it is to have a revolutionary organization, the significance of the African People's Socialist Party as the vehicle for the liberation of Africa, African workers, and the toiling masses of the world. Uhuru. Uhuru Chairman, uh, you're actually right on time. So. Oh, oh, splendid. Yeah, Uhuru. Uh, so now we're going to go ahead and introduce Secretary General Louise Kinshasa of the African Socialist International. Uhuru Louise. Yes, Wu, Director Akili, uh, thank you so much for inviting me to this uh, uh, important uh, uh, study of how Mali taught me. I also uh, like to salute uh, Chairman of Mali Stella, uh, our Chairman, uh, the leader of the African Revolution in African Nation. And I also like to salute uh, all uh, the uh, leaders of the African uh, Socialist Party at Central Committee uh, who are present, and also the leader of, of the uh, APSC, the Solidarity. Uh, who also is present. Um, first of all, uh, I just want to say uh, how much I appreciate and I enjoy uh, listening to Chairman uh, uh, Omari Shela laying out uh, just not just the foundation of our studies today, but uh, I would like to say that uh, uh, he laid out uh, what I consider the basis for the emergence of the African working class intellectuals. Uh, because a lot of people today, they say uh, black people have failed, Africa has failed, and you know all these things that go on uh, in the bourgeois press and uh, relayed by the African people bourgeoisie uh, throughout the community. Uh, African nation uh, has not failed. Uh, it's the African people bourgeoisie that has failed. Uh, that's really important because the African people bourgeoisie was trained was educated uh, by the uh, uh, white bourgeoisie. And uh, all the ideas were ideas uh, to promote the uh, interest of the African bourgeoisie or promote status quo. So 
to go forward, there is no doubt, and nobody should be in any doubt, that we need the emergence of the African working class intellectuals. And African internationalism, that's what he does. You remember, there is a, a giant in West Africa, Amikor Kabrad, we say the liberation, the African national liberation struggle must be laid by the best sons and daughters of Africa. And we say the national liberation for African nation must be led by the base African intellectuals from the working class, the African working class intellectuals. And that's the way uh, uh, we're gonna move forward. So we are fighting for conquest of political power. We go to election, we participate in all struggles, but what we're fighting for is conquest of political power which means revolutionary power, because the African working class can only fight for a revolutionary power. Anything less will not do. So the African internationalism is basically the road to victory. Do you want to win? We want to win? If you want to win, you join African internationalism. You become an African internationalist because this is the only road to victory. This is the, this is the philosophy, this is the organization, this is the strategy that makes us invincible. And that's why I'll be calling on you uh, to, if you're a first comer or you've been listening to us for some time, make the decision uh, today. Don't wait even uh, at the end of this program. You should make the decision today, become an African internationalist. And uh, our struggles, uh, you heard the chairman talking about it. African internationalism means merciless struggle against opportunism. We have to squeeze out, we have to remove, we have to defeat, we have to chase out all manifestation of opportunism in our community. The reason we, we're not going forward wherever the struggle is not going to its final conclusion, most of the time you will find out opportunism, which means elements of our community, particularly the African people with Brazil, or someone inspired by ideas of African people with Brazil, is ready to sell out the interests of the African revolution. And that's really strategic everywhere. If there is no struggle against opportunism where you're located, you know, you're not moving ahead because the consolidation of a revolution of, a, of the uh, revolutionary party that you need can only be uh, built in a serious struggle, uncompromised struggle against opportunism. And that's why the African internationalism uh, connects all Africans around the world. If you can look at these panels, you will see I'm in Europe, Africans in the United States, we, we are in the Bahamas, we are in Africa. Uh, so that's what African internationally does. That's part of the struggle against opportunism because there is no solution. You can call Bahamian solution for the African nation. It doesn't exist. There is no Senegalese or Congolese or South African or anything like that. It doesn't exist. We lost our freedom as a people. Uh, we're going to gain it back as a one people. And that's what we talk of one revolution. And that's why we, with confidence, wherever we are, the struggle we are involved, involved in, we know is the struggle of Jean-Jacques Dessalines. I might be in Senegal, the struggle is taking place there, but I know it's the struggle of Dessalines. I know that. You could be in the United States, but you know it's the struggle of Steve Biko too. So that's no matter where you are. So it's the struggle of African internationalism. And uh, with uh, African internationalism, the African working class is able to build its capacity. Uh, and we say that with confidence uh, because we know African free bourgeoisie is not in the mix. So he cannot stop us. He cannot delay us. He cannot fool us. And uh, we know that because we have a strategy. And our current strategy is that what we call regional strategy. Uh, I'm in Europe here. We're working, meeting, you know, having all these meetings, busy trying to work out what regional strategy looks like. And in the coming programs, you will see us talking more about, about that. But we know here in Europe, we have to produce, we have to distribute uh, what we need. We have to connect with, uh, with uh, our different fronts, the US front, the Bahamian front, the South African front, the Syrian front, to distribute uh, 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 the product uh, we, we have made uh, ourselves. And uh, we've been saying all along that we're not going back uh, to the situation before the uh, lockdown. We're gonna come out of this uh, on lockdown, ready to deepen the crisis of imperialism. 
with our regional strategy, this is exactly what uh, is going to happen. Uh, we're organizing uh, from here to London, uh, to France. Uh, we're getting in touch with all our base, uh, winning them that we are in a critical period, critical time, that we must come out of this lockdown ready to deepen the crisis of imperialism. That's one of the reasons I just appreciate being in this uh, platform because it just confirms uh, what we need to do to advance uh, the uh, regional strategy. We also want to say that our uh, African internationalism uh, in its uh, fight to bring all the uh, African working class, the present uh, back to revolution, we have to be clear that the AU, the uh, African uh, 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 Union needs to go because that organization is a highest manifestation of organization opportunism. Because when we say we're going to build uh, the African revolution in the struggle against opportunism, I know some people are trying to wo work out what I'm trying to say. This one concrete example that the AU must go. And uh, when we say uh, the uh, AU uh, must go, because we recognize is the house that opportunists build. And you can't have opportunists on the top of the African continent. You can't have opportunists on the top of the, uh, of the state, having the state power. You can't have that. So you have to go and you have to be replaced by revolutionary power. And uh, that's what African internationalism provides. That's what African internationalism is calling on all of us uh, to understand that we need a new process. And that's the new process is African internationalism, is the African working class organizing its own organization. And that organization is the African Socialist International, basically creating African people, socialist party everywhere we are. And that struggle for power, that struggle for black power, that struggle for African workers power is the struggle that is going to basically uh, change uh, the world. And uh, when we say we want a new world order, it must mean you have to join the ASI. It must mean you must build a party uh, on the ground uh, where uh, you are. And uh, you heard so many times the chairman talking about launching the final uh, offensive. And ASI is the tool to launch that final offensive. ASA is the tool to overturn the verdict of imperialism. And if you're trying to work out, to figure out what, what's the meaning of a Haitian revolution? What's the meaning of the Black Power struggle in the 60s? What's the meaning of a Baptist Lumumba struggle or a Bigel struggle, all this struggle? If you don't have an understanding of that meaning, you have to join the ASI because the struggle makes sense when you become the one who continues all the other previous struggle that came before us, when you become the legacy of Marcus Garvey, when you become the legacy of all these struggles before us. And that's what, that's what the ASI is. So join the ASI today and uh, be part of history. So I'm just going to read one paragraph and I'm gonna stop it here. Uh, this is from, of course, the vanguard. That's what I want you to be. Be the vanguard by joining the African People's Socialist Party. So uh, it's on the page 367. Africans and the world usually they don't understand the significance of Africa because the bourgeoisie has you know portrayed Africa and the African people to, to, to a certain way that it undermines the consciousness of everyone. Africa holds the key to the future. When I say Africa holds the key, I mean the African revolution holds the key to the future for humanity, to the new world order. So I'm gonna read from uh, three, six, page 367. Will you recognize that the struggle for the liberation and the unification for Africa and African people, the struggle for the consolidation of the African nation is ultimately a struggle that undermines the solidarity of the European nation state, which means the, uh, the United States, uh, France, Australia, New Zealand, uh, all, you know, all these uh, nation states. Uh, we understand that under imperialism, those who were enslaved, 
colonized and oppressed as a people, will have to win liberation as a people. So not only are we going to win the liberation as a people, but we're going to undermine the white imperialist power states and open up a new world. That's what we say, the road to socialism is painted black. So I just want to say thank you, uh, Director Akili. Thank you, Chairman O'Malley. Uh, thank you to uh, everyone who took time to listen and uh, I'll stop here and uh, ready to listen to the director of our ASI, our organization in Africa, uh, Chairman Tafak. Uhuru, thank you, S.G. Louise. And um, as said, uh, we're going to now go in to introduce Chairman Tafari of the African People's Socialist Party, Akpa Dazania. Uhuru Tafari. Uhuru, Director Akile. Uh, thank you for having me on the show, Comrade. All right, so you have um, 10 minutes to uh, discuss you know, to contribute to this discussion and as well as, you know, tell us about the work that's happening in Occupy Dazania under your leadership. All right, uh, thank you, comrade. Uh, firstly, I'd like to appreciate, express my appreciation for being able and also uh, for being on the meeting. Organization. The chairman was saying also, um, as the director of organization in Africa. All right. Okay. Should I go ahead? All right. Uh, thank you, comrade. Uh, uh, thank you, comrade Akile, director Akile, uh, for hosting uh, this uh, particular show. Uh, the, the study, the Omali taught me. Sunday study. I know there's lots and lots of um, sessions that have been archived in the African People's Socialist Party. Uh, we have been learning a lot uh, from these Sunday studies. So really I want to express appreciation and salute uh, Chairman Omali Echitela for his uh, tireless fight uh, for over 50 years now. And we are here, some of us were not there when the African People's Socialist Party was founded but then uh, we are here now and we want to claim the history of the African uh, People's Socialist Party as our own. So, um, so we really appreciate that. And we take courage in the fact that really if African people are determined or if a people are determined to really win their freedom, uh, they will be consistent and they'll keep fighting despite what is um, trending or uh, what appears to be relevant at a, any given time, because I want to also uh, reference the chairman, the chairman in one of his uh, presentations, he, he stated that um, uh, elections come and go, coups uh, coup overthrow governments and uh, uh, once in a while or every now and then an African can be made out on the street and whatever. And, but then the fact is that the system of colonial capitalism remains. And that is actually what defines our struggle. You know, So this is what we have really uh, taken up from the African People's Socialist Party. And even if we are here in South Africa, we recognize that we are part of the strategy of the African People's Socialist Party to consolidate the struggle of African people, struggles of African people all over the world. Because wherever there is oppression, uh, there, there is resistance, right? So you see African people in uh, Congo, Ghana, everywhere in the US uh, protesting and doing all sorts of kind of things, expressing that there's a will to be free. Everybody wants to be free in the world. Uh, but, but, but then uh, a lot of people do not recognize the fact that um, the whole oppression that we are suffering as African people is as a consequence of, of Africa being under attack, being attacked by Europe, uh, the enslavement of African people and, and the colonization of, of Africa. So uh, African internationalism has actually uh, proved to be the, uh, the, the best uh, 
in, in like from everything that we have we have received. Like for example, I just want to speak about how we uh, we we got introduced into the into the African People's Service Party and how we even got and why even we uh, we have taken up this uh, this responsibility to build the party here in Occupied Azania. Um, some of us were students. I was a student, a university student, when I was, I was introduced into the African People's uh, to the African People's Socialist Party and African internationalism. And actually, I was trying to find solutions, you know, uh, getting videos online and things like that, uh, Pan Africanism here and whatever. But there was nothing coherent that explained like this is uh, what defines this particular social system that is oppressing us everywhere. There was no coherence whatsoever. So you could be told that our uh, well, slavery happened, our white people are arrogant, they're, they're, they're racist and whatever, but this doesn't explain why uh, in, in the African people are locked up in the townships and why white people have so much. We, we did not have such an explanation until we took up African internationalism. And I also want to add that this uh, uh, political theory of African internationalism has actually helped us beyond what some comrades uh, even can, 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 can comprehend in, in simple things like um, subjective things, as well as things in the families, how to deal with, uh, our, with contradictions within the African community. Because sometimes uh, if you don't understand the nature of a contradiction, which is what African internationalism helps us to, to understand, you end up trying to resolve contradictions uh, uh, in a way that doesn't fit uh, the nature of that particular contradiction, which is why uh, there's so much violence in the, in the communities, African people, uh, why, what we have defined as horizontal violence and, and things like that. So um, I want to say that our historical mission is actually to sum up neocolonialism and fight for, uh, for, for a unified and liberated socialist Africa. That is our mission right now because the African petty bourgeoisie cannot do it anymore. It cannot do it and uh, it has no intention of even doing it. That's why Chairman Omali Echitela has said that uh, the African petty bourgeoisie uh, has lost any historically de derived revolutionary or progressive character. They have lost it completely. So even when we speak, like for example, not long ago I was speaking to a member of one of the so-called radical organizations here in, in Occupied Azania, and you were saying that, uh, well, the primary contradiction is, is colonialism. And we agree that the, the primary contradiction is colonialism. But then what these uh, so-called radicals do, they want to uh, detach the African petty bourgeoisie from colonialism. But when we say neo-colonialism, uh, we mean that it's colonialism, it's, it's white power in, in blackface. So Cyril Ramaphosa, the ANC, um, and all the parliamentarians who are in parliament there, they, they are part of colonialism. That's why we can even say uh, neo-colonialism is because you have black faces there uh, in the service of, 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 of our colonizers. So, so, so neo-colonialism is, uh, is, is, neo is, is colonialism. We cannot talk of neo-colonialism as if it's something that is separate from uh, the colonialism that we're speaking of. So I just want to say that uh, we have taken this up and the African People's Socialist Party is, is alive here in Occupied Azania in South Africa. And uh, it, is, it is building the, uh, the, the International People's Democratic um, uh, Uhuru Movement as a, as, 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 as a strategy to win the African working class from wherever they are. We want to win the African working class back to political life because there is no African revolution without uh, the active and conscious participation of the African working class. Just like Robert Subukwe said here um, in, uh, in, in, in Occupied Azania, he, st he, st he stated that uh, the core of the African revolution is those are uh, people who are in the townships, the African working class, those who are produced. Crew, um, 
seems like maybe we have some internet issues uh, with Comrade Tafari. So, um, trying to see if he will come back on soon. Okay, so um, if his does not come back on, um, we'll go ahead and move it to Chairman Alex Morley, Morley of APSP Bahamas. Um, and when we open it back up for discussion, uh, hopefully we can hear the rest of what Chairman Tafari uh, was saying. So Uhuru, uh, Chairman Alex, we can't see you. Um, okay, now we can. Uhuru, Chairman. Alex. Uhuru, comrades, uh, Uhuru. Uh, Uhuru, comrades, uh, my name is Alex Moli. I am uh, the chairman of the African People uh, Socialist Party here in the Bahamas. Uh, I also head up uh, the front to work for the African Socialist International for the Caribbean and the South American region. Uh, Uhuru, comrades, Uhuru. Uh, first, let me say, I, I want to uh, say that I uh, really appreciate uh, the chairman's overview, and I unite uh, uh, with all the things that the chairman has said, and I uh, appreciate uh, the the, uh, the the presentation by Secretary General uh, Louise uh, Kachasha uh, as well, and also uh, uh, Chairman uh, Chairman uh, Tafari. Uh, brothers and sisters, I just want to speak a little bit about the work that's going on uh, right here in, in, in the Bahamas. Uh, right now, I'm currently in the process of having uh, weekly meetings. That's on uh, Mondays, Mondays at uh, 6.30, 6.30 p.m. Um, and those are the meetings to build the African People's Socialist Party uh, in the Bahamas. Um, uh, this let me uh, send a shout, a shout out to uh, Ross Copper and uh, Ross uh, uh, Marco. There are many other brothers and sisters out there who are supporters of the African People's Socialist Party Bahamas over these years. And I would ask you to, uh, to reach out to me. I am in the process of reaching out to uh, persons and I would ask you also to reach out to me. Uh, my number is 525-0147, 525-0147. But uh, we're having our party meetings and that's our meetings to build the African People's Socialist Party Bahamas. That's on Mondays at 6.30 uh, p.m. Our brothers and sisters, uh, we need a party. We, uh, the reason that we are building the African People's Socialist Party Bahamas is that we need a party that is uh, fighting, uh, that will fight to put the resources in the hands of the people, that will fight to uh, make sure that our people uh, benefit uh, from all the, the abundance of resources that we have uh, in this country. You know, uh, The Bahamas is a country where our uh, at the moment, 90% of the food that we uh, consume, brothers and sisters, is, is uh, food, uh, 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 Im imported, uh, imported food. And brothers and sisters, that's not, uh, if you see the islands, I, I, I want it to be a day when all of you can uh, be able to come here. Uh, but there is, uh, we have an abundance of resources in, in Bahamas. So it's, we have a, a parasitic uh, relationship with North America and Europe where our goods, 60 to $80 million worth of our, food, our, our, our seafood is going outside of our country. So brothers and sisters, we want to build a party that wants to put the, uh, the, the resources in the hands of the people. And, and we believe, we, we know that we have all of the resources in this country uh, uh, that, that, that where we can bring about that process. Uh, one of the things that we experienced during this uh, corona epidemic is the fact that uh, we didn't even have the combined national resources to uh, to feed our people, uh, our, our leaders, our leaders uh, had meetings with uh, private interest groups, private persons, and they ordered those meetings. They told us that they uh, assured us that the national security of the the national food security of the Bahamas was was okay. Uh, brothers and sisters, we need a party that that when it speaks. Uh, uh, and, and it's it assuring you of something. It is assuring you of the collective power that we have nationally. We we want a party that we we in the we would be about the business of of, uh, of making sure that we produce bread and and, and 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 water. That's that's the minimum that we should be doing uh, for our, for our people, even before disasters or during disasters. But we don't even have the collective power right now 
that, uh, that, that we produce and bread and water for our people and brothers and sisters. But that's the kind of party that, I, that we trying to build in the Bahamas. We want to build a party where we connect all of these islands in this country. We have 700 uh, islands, brothers and sisters, not all of them in, uh, inhabited. But I, I'm, in my weekly meetings, I'm, I speak with our brother Marco, uh, who, who is in a Lutra, and he constantly tells me about how many uh, uh, fruits and, and, and vegetables uh, in abundance in Lutra. Brothers and sisters, we need African unity in the Bahamas. We need to, to, to connect the African workers in, in, the, in, the, in the islands, the developed islands and the African farmers so that we can get food production in a, in a, in a proper process going on. We need to connect these islands together. And these and leaders are not in the business of collect, uh, connecting these islands, brothers and sisters. These leaders are not in the business, in the business of building a process that that is the boat us feeding ourselves, and they are not in the business of that, brothers and sisters, because they are financially tied to these uh, corporations. It's been more more than a, a, a decade now that a European company came into this country, uh, a European conglomerate came into this country, gobbled up uh, uh, national companies that were owned by national. Uh, the national bourgeoisie uh, cobbled up those uh, uh, co 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 companies, formed one, one national conglomerate, a food conglomerate. That food conglomerate, brothers and sisters, basically supplies all of the convenience stores and all of the food stores in this country. That same conglomerate, brothers and sisters, is headquartered in Europe. We have members of the government right now who are financially tied to that our uh, uh, conglomerate brothers and sisters. These leaders will never lead us because they are being led by other people. You see, they are being led by other people. So when the when uh, in the in the African Socialist International Manifesto, when it speaks about the African petty bourgeoisie, doesn't have the interests of the African working class at hand. It is the truth that the African petty petty bourgeoisie does not believe in the unification of Africa. It is the truth. It is an alliance with, with, with uh, 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 Europe. It is an alliance with, with imperialism for prosperity and privilege, brothers and sisters. And that, that's exactly what we're dealing with in the Bahamas. We can't expect these leaders to build a process uh, about the, uh, us growing and us feeding ourselves because they're in the hand of the imperialist brothers and sisters. So we need a new leadership. We need the African People's Socialist Party. That's what, that's what we need and that's what we're trying to build, brothers and sisters. The second thing I want to say, brothers and sisters, there's no law, uh, there's no law that that says that uh, that that uh, we in the Bahamas must forever, the Africans in the Bahamas must forever be the consumers, the workers, and the consumers for white power in Europe, brothers and sisters. No, no, Africa is our land, brothers and sisters, and and, and Africa is the richest continent on, on the planet, and we need. We will build a trade relationship with Africa. That's what the African People's Socialist Party is going to do. We want a relationship with Congo, with Ghana. No, we want a relationship with, with all of Africa because we're in the process of building the United States of Africa. But we want a relationship with Africa, brothers and sisters. And we want to be able to define, say that we want a relationship with our brothers and sisters in Venezuela. If we want oil from Venezuela, if we want to grow our get a dig for our own oil and use it for the collective interest of the people, we will do that. But if we want to get oil from Venezuela, then we will do that because we will define our own trade relationships, brothers and sisters. That's a part of the diversif diversification process that we will carry out in, in the Bahamas, brothers and sisters. That's the job that the African People's Socialist Party is involved in, taking power building African unity, African unity in these islands, connecting the African farm, African workers and the farmers in these 700 keys and reefs, and also connecting the Africans in the Bahamas to Africans in the Caribbean and also to, to, to Africans on the continent, building the African nation, uh, brothers and sisters. Uh, the last thing I want to say, brothers and sisters, ALD. ALD is coming up on, uh, on uh, May 25th, and the African People's Socialist Party Bahamas will be having African hosting African Liberation Day, and uh, where uh, Chairman O'Malley of the African People's Socialist Party, uh, Secretary General Louise Kanshasa, and other members of the African People's Socialist Party Bahamas will be speaking. To see, I all uh, uh, messing up myself, but uh, brothers and sisters, we'll be speaking, and uh, 
The theme is going to be self-determination. The theme is self-determination and unity, brothers and sisters. And uh, I will be putting out information about that. But uh, that's African Liberation Day. And what we want to use is African Liberation Day. We want to use this as an event to spark the African cooperative movement in this country so that we can liberate African people and unify Africa. That's what we want to do spark the African cooperative movement in this country. We got to work together. That's it. We got to work together. That's how we can break African internationalism, African people throughout these islands uh, in the Caribbean working together and working together to reclaim Africa as our land. That's what, that's, that's, that's where our power is at. Uh, one Africa, one nation. Uh, that's the things I want to say. And I, I just want to say uh, I, a thank you to uh, Chairman O'Malley for giving me this opportunity to speak. Uh, thank you to uh, the Secretary General of the ASI, uh, Ruizy Kinshasa, Yuhuru, One Africa, One Nation, brothers. Uhuru, Uhuru, Alex, and I just want to say, wow, what an incredible discussion and in all of these presentations by um, our Chairman, Secretary General Luwezi, Chairman Tafari and Chairman Alex. And it seems like we're still trying to get Chairman Tafari on, but we're going to go ahead and go into discussion. And this is going to be opened up for all of um, the participants in this meeting. Um, but I just wanted to first, before we go into that, recognize where people are watching from. We'll be taking questions from online um, viewers as well, but we do want to go ahead and open it up to the um, to discuss the presentations that were given this morning, especially from any of the other any of the leaders that are present um, in this discussion now. But we have people watching from Ghana, Sierra Leone, Occupied Azania, Chicago, Maryland, Philadelphia, Boston, St. Louis, St. Petersburg, Minneapolis. Richmond, Virginia, Tampa, Florida, Atlanta, Georgia, Augusta, Georgia, Hempstead, New York, Detroit, Nigeria, Italy, Oakland, California, and Brooklyn, New York. So Hru, shout out to all of you everywhere that is that you are watching. And obviously this message resonates with every single African, no matter where it is we've been dispersed. So we're gonna go ahead now and um, open up this, um, you know, this program for discussion and want to see first, are there any um, forces on this um, in participating in this discussion that have anything they wanted to contribute um, or ask, and then we'll uh, go ahead and take some questions from our online audience. Uhuru. Uhuru, uh, thank you, Comrade Director. Um, I also want to appreciate the fact that uh, you know uh, you did uh, you know begin to push comrades to say what they're doing because there's a lot. Of, you know, we had 10 minutes for presentations and you know, there's a lot of stuff that's happening I know that did not get addressed that we are involved in doing in the various places where we're located. Uh, but I think it's really important to restate the fact that wherever we are, our objective is to take power. That's what we're fighting for, to get the power, uh, to mobilize the people and bring people into uh, the process of doing that. Um, just in terms of Comrade Luese Kinshasa, uh, whose presentation was outstanding, but uh, there's a lot of work that's being done uh, by this comrade that I think would be helpful uh, if it were known uh, to members of the party and, and our movement and others, you know, like the, uh, the regular uh, political education that's uh, happening uh, in, uh, you know, uh, that's, you know, two or three times a week, uh, we are engaged in political education uh, studies in Lingala, French, English, um, that we, uh, Carmen Luizzi has uh, been an organizer throughout Europe, uh, bringing, building the party uh, in, in, uh, in France. And he's built the party at uh, different times in, in uh, Belgium, uh, in Germany. Uh, uh, and also he's worked on the continent of Africa and does an incredible amount of work uh, with, the, uh, with uh, 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 our brothers and sisters in Africa and particularly in Congo where he's, where he's uh, from. Uh, I just think that's really important for people to, to know and understand and the work uh, that I know that's happening uh, in Occupy Zania, uh, just incredibly significant work right there in the townships. Uh, we, those are townships. <laughs> that's where we are constructing the foundation for the Revolutionary Project because people see a lot of stuff uh, uh, from South Africa on social media and what have you, but what they don't see is what, what the active participation of uh, movements in the townships themselves. That's where we, that's our, that's our base. That's where we're doing the work uh, on, a, on a lot of different ways. And so I just wanted to, you know, to acknowledge that. And uh, uh, also uh, 
their activities and uh, institutions that's been created uh, in in Nassau uh, uh, that we can speak to and political work that's happened in Nassau over a number of years that where we have a, a real meaningful kind of presence and that we are uh, uh, we've run for political office there. We've challenged the uh, the ideological uh, the worldview of uh, people who want to say they're in the movement there. And uh, while Comrade uh, 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 talked about Comrade uh, Alex talked about a building cooperative movement there in the Bahamas, uh, fundamental to all of that, of course, is building the party there. And that's what's something that uh, Comrade Alex has been working. Uh, for 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 a while now. I just wanted to make that observation. Uhuru. Uhuru, Chairman. Um, I did. We do have a uh, comrade Tafari back on, and there was a question that came from online uh, that particularly addressed uh, comrade Chairman Tafari. So I wanted to make sure we got that. It's from um, uh, Morty in Richmond, Virginia. Asked Uhuru, Chairman, the EFF and Azania talk the talk of socialism. But you have stated that they represent petty bourgeois opportunism and a caricature of the African working class. Um, and he asked if you or Chairman Tafari can expound on that um, some. Yeah, I can turn it over to Comrade Tafari. And, and, you know, he wants to make a, mm. have anything to say about that. Did you hear that, Comrade Tafari? Uhuru Chairman, I could not hear you clearly. Can you please repeat? Uh, Comrade uh, uh, Kile, was, uh, there was a question that was talking about the EFF. Yes, and, uh, yes I heard the question. How, how we do that. They talk oh, about- Oh, yes. Uh, Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, I, I want to say that with regards to, uh, to, to the EFF, uh, first of all, they are not organizing the African working class to even be conscious of itself as a class. That needs to understand that there's a uh, there's the African petty bourgeoisie that needs to be fought. That, that's one, because we're not going, only going to judge. Actually, you don't judge an organization by what it says. That's what uh, the chairman has been saying, right? Uh, that's why uh, the, the EFF uh, has not... In the, suggested in its action or how it organizes, it is, organizes itself that it's fighting for, for socialism, right? But what they're doing is that they want to perfect uh, colonialism by making colonialism to, to fit uh, some, some kind of aspirations for African people to find themselves within this whole thing. One of the things they did is that uh, they, they say they uphold the Freedom Charter more than the the, the ANC does, but what is the Freedom Charter? It was from the Freedom Charter uh, where the, the, the uh, Robert Mangali Susobuwe and other comrades uh, decided to break away and create, uh, build an independent organization that's going to fight for Africa, to, to fight for its own self-determination and get rid of the colonizer, you know? So it, this is neocolonialism. Actually, one of the things that uh, Julius Malema once said is that uh, we want a, a bloodless revolution. And then he goes on to say, um, there's a lecture that he did in um, with, with some, uh, like settler colonizers, those who are called farmers, bures, you know? Uh, these, these are white people who have came to Africa. When they are, they call themselves Africanas, which is supposed to mean Africans in Africa, you know? You colonize us, take our land, and then you call yourselves Africans, you know? So, and then, uh, he went to them, at, and they, they also call themselves Bures. Bure means farmer. But you are not a farmer in Europe. How did you come to Africa, and then all of a sudden you are a farmer, and uh, the African is a, a, a shanty town dweller or something like the informal settlement dweller, you know? So there is that contradiction. And when Julius Malia went to speak to those people, and he told that, uh, well, if you don't listen to the EFF, uh, these people, actually, you should be thankful to the EFF that uh, because if the EFF was not there, these people would be angry and they'd come to you and take everything from you. And then he said that you need to share the land. That kind of language indicates that uh, these people are not fighting for Africa to take Africa back to Africans, you know? So um, there's just a lot. Uh, let me indicate something. Uh, the African People's Socialist Party, we are a numerically, we are a minority here. We are very few. But then the, the impact we have in the townships, it's far greater than what the EFF can, uh, has had 
so far. What we have three, only three branches of Impidam, and every weekend, um, every weekend we are on the streets doing political studies with the African working class, so that they can arm themselves with theory. The EFF cannot do that. One of the reasons they cannot do that is because they don't have one. They don't have a political theory. They call themselves uh, Marxist Leninist Fanonians. And then you ask them, what is Marxist Leninist uh, Fanonian? There's no such a thing. There's no coherence. That's why earlier on I said that uh, African internationalism has given us a coherent explanation to why we are in this situation. That's why they can talk about white monopoly capital and then, but they don't want to talk about parasitic capitalism because if they talk about parasitic capitalism they have to question people like Cyril Ramaphosa uh, the uh, the black uh, petty bourgeoisie who wants to be capitalist themselves you know so there's just a lot I can only say a few but I hope that is helpful Chairman and uh, in, in the for, for the person who has the questions Uhuru. well I think it's really important especially important uh, for people uh, to hear that from you because what they when they see uh, EFF, uh, uh, through social media, Facebook and, and YouTube and what have you, from uh, sitting uh, someplace in New York or Texas, uh, they assume that that represents the reality uh, in Occupy Tanzania. So it's really good to have the party on the ground and for people to hear from you right there and, and to see that uh, we're not enthralled uh, by the EFF of Julius and Malema. And I think what you said also is extremely important because Malema has uh, put forth a, some pretty radical statements. For example, he talks about nationalizing the mines and things like that. And he also has talked about unity of Africa. Uh, but when you talk about nationalizing the mines, that's, uh, there, there are various resources uh, that were nationalized under the apartheid regime. Uh, the question is not nationalization so much as of what class is, uh, when you talk about nationalizing something, what class is in power? Uh, to nationalize it doesn't put the working class in power. The same petty bourgeoisie that, that's there in the ANC <clears throat> and the EFF that would become the ANC given an opportunity, they would be the ones who, uh, who uh, control these nationalized institutions as opposed to the working class. They, they can't say uh, that the petty bourgeoisie has to be overthrown. They can't say that uh, the ANC uh, represents the class enemy uh, of, uh, of African people and therefore we have to have a revolution that puts the workers and working class in power. They can't say uh, uh, even their, their soft position on the attack uh, of uh, in South Africa against uh, Africans who come across that artificial border. Their position on that is weak as hell. They don't talk about the unification of all of, of Africa and the borders have to go. The borders must be destroyed and that part of our priority coming to power is to take down those damn borders. There's no rational explanation for maintaining the borders except that the borders function as incubators for the reproduction of the petty bourgeoisie as a social force uh, in Africa. So anyway, I mean, that's part of what it is. And I, I thought that was, that's really important. That's like I said, it's in, important for people to hear that from you uh, because they hear, they see the, the EFF and hear militant statements and, and see a lot of red shirts and uh, on social media and assume that is something that's representative of the reality uh, uh, that enthralls all of our people on the con in, in South Africa. And that's not the case at all. Uhuru. So um, we don't have another question, so we can take this time to, um, you know, engage and deepen this discussion. So I want to go ahead and open it up to you, comrades, um, to be able. Oh, and we had a comment from Comrade Benjamin Prado of the Union del Barrio, Undersecretary of Union del Barrio, says abolish colonial borders. Uhuru. Uhuru, Comrade Benjamin. Uhuru. So I think it's clear that everybody who's Everybody who, of all of the participants, you know, can also present it, uh, participate in this discussion. They have questions in that, right, Uhuru. Uhuru, this is Yajide. Can you hear me? Yes. Uhuru, so um, for those who are watching, I'm Yajide Orumila. I'm the president of the African National Women's Organization. And I just really um, appreciate this discussion, also like the overarching theme of the petty boo and neocolonialism and how that manifests itself in the African nation. And in my particular field here in the Uhuru movement, I'm responsible for re recruiting uh, revolutionary African women to fill the ranks of this revolution and build the ranks of our party. Um, we also contend with this petty boo um, 
I, mean, I can't even call it theory, this idea of feminism um, that uh, is a place where the petty bourgeois Africans sit, you know, and take over this question of what is happening to women. So a lot of what they are coming out with is like, oh, we should legalize sex work or um, things like that, that further deepen the oppression of African women as opposed to saying we need to destroy the entire colonial structure, we need to destroy capitalism, but they work to legalize, make it even more um, acceptable within society to, to allow for the deepened exploitation of African women and girls, I mean, and women and girls across the world. I think that um, when we start to examine, use dialectical materialism and examine just all sorts of situations that impact the African nation, we can break it down and identify who's the petty bourgeois, who's the opportunist, who is the neocolonial, you know, sellout that is selling our people, selling the African freedom for some pittance of, of capitalism. And, you know, we have so many issues that are impacting African women as more than half of the African nation were locked into so many different um, menial positions. We are struggling to survive ourselves. We are pushed, we are, we are made like money, fluid in whatever situation. Um, our children are uh, taken. Um, in particular, in the United States, we are dealing with the state-sponsored kidnapping of African children by the state, but also like this whole question of adoption all over the world for African people. I mean, after the hurricane in Haiti, we saw lots of stories about people trying to take out African children out of Haiti and, and the government not doing a damn thing because African workers don't have power. The African workers aren't able to sustain ourselves, but also the, we're not um, organized in order to you know, really contend with the government. And what we are saying in the African People's Socialist Party is that we have to build the party. All of these issues, all of these questions uh, can be solved by the African working class and are being solved by the African working class. And we are building the infrastructure now to deal with that. So I just really appreciate the discussion so far around you know, this whole question of neocolonialism and how it manifests itself in the African nation. And you know, I'm really calling everybody who's watching, who have been watching for weeks. I mean, I mean, maybe for years, you know, to join the African People's Socialist Party, join the Ahura movement, because this is where you get to become the revolutionary African government, and and build what it is that we need in our world. We cannot sit by and wait for these petty bull opportunists who we have identified over and over and over again are selling us out. We now have to say we have to build our own infrastructure so that we we are going to take power. Uhuru. Uhuru. Is there anyone else, comrades? Uhuru. 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 This is uh, Matum and Ayobi, and I'm uh, I, I want to really uh, appreciate this discussion, uh, this this uh, political education, uh, Chairman. Uh, uh, Secretary General Luizzi and Sec um, Chairman Tafari. And um, I'm just, uh, my name is uh, again, uh, Matum Niobi. I'm the uh, Northern Region Representative of African, African People's Socialist Party. And, um, you know, I'm just um, one of the uh, four regional reps. And, uh, you know, my job is uh, basically, uh, I'm just honored to, to, to represent the party uh we're, we're building the party you know we're building for power um it's a real organization and um i just want to salute every all, all the members here at, at, at participating uh in the in this uh discussion um so um yeah we're we're on, i'm on the ground in uh up in, in the northern region and uh that region makes up uh um the states of uh, starting from Maine all the way down to Virginia. So um, we're building in, in these regions, uh, creating units, we're on the ground, we're, we're sort of defending our institutions, um, you know, um, that, such as the uh, Ohuru Furniture Store and collectibles here in Philadelphia, such as the One Africa, One Nation Marketplace uh, that's here in Philadelphia. That's socialist um, institutions uh, that belong to the people, that belong to you. No matter where you're at, whether you're in South Africa, whether you're in the West Coast, um, uh, we are a united front. Um, you know, all the regional reps, uh, we're, we're here to 
to follow up the mandates to build the region, the regional work that's been um, came out of the uh, 7th Congress and also the uh, 2000, uh, 2020 uh, plenary uh, that said that, you know, that we have to follow this and, and, and complete the regional strategy, which is an important, important, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's just necessary for us to do. So I'm just honored uh, to, to be a part of this uh, organization. And again, uh, we are we, we are the regular people, you know, we're the doctors, we're the, we the, the, the laborers, we are a party made up of uh, just um, working class people. And I'm right here in the community with the people on the ground, following up, uh, you know, even during this, this pandemic, we haven't uh, shut, you know, just stopped doing work and we're building even harder than we were uh, before the pandemic. And when I'm like to say that I'm proud that and honored to say that we were uh, in, in the, the African People's Socialist Party was in a position to move this work. Uh, we've been prepared. We didn't. This is not new to us. We're not shocked. We just threw this into uh, you know uh, our campaign. You know, with the uh, the uh, conference. I mean, our commission, uh, the commission that that put out protocols that was necessary because this government, this uh, imperialist government, has nothing for the uh, no leadership. Uh, for African people, we so um, the party is the leadership. Is the only organization out there on the ground in the communities, putting up posters, preparing uh, our people, uh, giving them direction and leadership on how to prepare for the pandemic and um, in a meaningful way. So um, yeah, this is. Uh, I just want to say, and another thing, I was so I'm saying I'm encouraging everybody. If you're not a part of the African People uh, Socialist Party, to <laughs> to join, you know, um, you, if you're in the Northern region, you can reach me and if you have a pencil, I'm gonna give you my number, it's 267-457-4987. I'll give it to you again, it's 267-457-4987. So, um, yeah, I just want to um, so appreciate this again and appreciate the discussion. Uh, we are um, uh, 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 a real organization, and I'm glad to see now you can see us. And uh, you know, it's not, you know, <laughs> we we we're gonna be here. And I appreciate this uh, study every weekend, and I encourage everybody to continue to study and also continue to join and support support the, the organization. If you don't want to be a revolutionary, if you don't want to do the work, we understand, you know, we have mass organizations and uh, you can just donate because we are building and you can go to um, uh, blackpowerblueprint.org and you can see what, we, what we're building. We're not just talking about it. We have material, you know, you can actually see where we're putting our money uh, to, work, to, 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 to use. So, uh, Uhuru. Uhuru. I want to thank uh, Comrade Matum uh, for uh, making that presentation. He stated he is the uh, the chair or the uh, regional representative of uh, the party's uh, northern uh, area. Uh, but uh, uh, and and I'm glad that that you had those words to say on the meetings uh, coming up. Uh, people who uh, have different kinds of responsibilities as regions or uh, people who lead organizations uh, such as uh, Comrade uh, Yejide. Uh, and, and uh, Comrade Dr. Aisha Fields and Penny Hess and uh, Comrades Kalambayi, you, you'll be having an opportunity to say things uh, more specific to what it is that you do or the regions that you represent. Um, I want you to use this time, if you will, uh, the few minutes that we have left uh, to address or speak to <clears throat> or question uh, the panelists uh, who we uh, just heard from, uh, including Comrades uh, uh, Tafari, uh, Alex, uh, Comrade Luizzi, uh, and, and myself. So um, if there's anything that needs to be stated or raised, and uh, I would hope you would do that. And also, uh, it seems to me, Comrade uh, 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 Director, that we, we, we probably need uh, shortly to open this up for, uh, to, to more people uh, to be able to speak, <laughs> say some things. Uh, yeah. com uh, 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 comrade, um, uh, Chairwoman uh, Penny Hess, I don't know if you had any observations you wanted to make. I know that usually you will sit there until called upon, so. 
which is quite appropriate. <laughs> Uhuru. Uhuru Chairman Uhuru, and I just really want to salute this incredible process and meeting that we're in today. I want to salute Chairman Omali Shatela, our leadership in the African People's Solidarity Committee, and just the um, Omali taught me Sunday study that's been going on for so many years, as has been said, which is incredible. And I want to join in saluting Secretary General Louise Kinshasa for that brilliant presentation and Chairman Tafari Mugheri, also Director of Organization of the Africa Front, just for the brilliant work and Chairman Alex Morley from the Caribbean and Bahamas for that brilliant presentation as well. And just to say that, that the thing that is so incre incredible, well, so powerful about African internationalism and the leadership of the African People's Socialist Party is that this question of parasitic capitalism that has been addressed here, this, the critical question in the world and that the party has shown in theory and practice that parasitic capitalism is a dialectical process. It has two sides. It has the ravaging of the majority of humanity, the majority of the world, of African people, the enslavement, the genocide, the plunder, the rape. <clears throat> and it has the other side of that, which is the experience of white people sitting on the pedestal that is the beneficiary as the colonizer nation of everything that has been stolen from African people. And the whole question of opportunism which is everything that the majority of white people understand and see is opportunism, is seeing the world in our own interests and, the and, and our struggle as one to solve our own problems, but continue to sit on the backs of everybody else. So this is a powerful move on the part of the party to create the African People's Solidarity Committee to begin with in the whole world. And um, that our work, our number one question, our brand, who we are is the question of reparations. And we understand that the question of reparations is the most critical question for white people because it brings us to how the system got to be the way it is. And the fact that African people are gonna be free and liberated. And so this is what the work is that APSC does. And I just wanted to open that up to just discuss with Chair Tafari and Chair Alex Morley about, you know, the whole question of white people in, in Azania, in Africa, and in the Caribbean as well, that, continue to be the oppressor nation there. And I just wanted to get your comments on that. We do see that and understand that APSC has to build in those parts of the world under the leadership of the African revolution. Uhuru. Uh, you, you, comrade. I mean, I thank you. Uh, I, uh, from the Bahamas, I know the the, the reparations is a it's a very important. Uh, it's something that we need to tackle as uh, the African People uh, Socialist uh, Party uh, in the Bahamas. I think that uh, the relationship between our uh, European powers and other Caribbean uh, uh, countries uh, is a is a very uh, parasitic relationship. Uh, but right now. It seems as if uh, our governments, we, we are already in a, in a state of economic dependency in terms of uh, international financial institutions, whether it be IDB or the uh, International Monetary uh, uh, Fund. And it seems now that the government may be, in a, may be willing to borrow more monies uh, to, to deal with the situation that uh, the economic uh, situation that they find themselves in. But this, I'm sure that other governments in the Caribbean are thinking about this. But the, the question shouldn't be uh, these financial institutions are, are 
having this parasitic relationship with, with our with our countries in the Caribbean or straight road Africa, you know. The relationship itself it has to be changed. It should be a question that it should be a question of reparations. What is it because these countries, the wealth that the, the, the wealth that they are giving us, supposedly the monies that they are giving us is monies that we know that is extracted from uh, from from Africa and other uh, other colonized people that are uh, throughout the world. So the question is, is really uh, how do we uh, how do we uh, change this uh, this relationship? And the question is uh, reparations. You know, we we are owed we are owed our 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 we this this the, the relationship between us and these these countries and these institutions must be changed in the benefit. Uh, it, it, in a way that is advantageous uh, to Africa and African people. And right now, uh, it's not. And reparations, discussing reparations on a political level in the Caribbean is, uh, is something that's important. And it's something that we, we and as the African People's Socialist Party in the Bahamas uh, want to tackle. And we actually want to uh, host a, a, a tribunal, a reparations tribunal right, right here in the Bahamas. But that's that's the work uh, that uh, that we we are involved in. Uhuru. Uhuru. Yes, uh, Uhuru. I, I hope I can be heard. I see my network seems to be poor here. Um, but Uhuru. Uhuru, come here. We can hear you. Oh yes, thank you, Chairman. I just wanted to uh, uh to to respond to Comrade Up. Uh, Penny's um, question. And uh, I think the first thing to recognize is that South Africa is a settler colony, is a settler colony. And I think what that, what that means is that when, when white people came here, 1652, uh, from, uh, from, from Holland, when they, when they, when they got here, they, uh, they, they, they somehow, I don't know, they, 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 there's a thing with colonizers here, they spiritually, uh, they are spiritually attached to to this land, you know. So, so they they they, they claim it even. That's why in 19 uh, when when Nelson Mandela was was released, and they started having negotiations with white people, you know, those set uh, 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 the, the whole negotiations. There is a an organization of of, of white people here, you know, the conservative so called conservative, uh, who stormed in one of those uh, negotiation. Uh, buildings, and then they said this is, is, is on land. This is our land. They said this is their land. So we have that kind of contradiction. And then with the radical black uh, activists, they don't want to. They don't want to discuss even the question of white people at all. Why? Because they don't have answers. They don't. They can't even explain why, uh, how, how this system was born, and how white people are able to thrust themselves as this dominant force in society. They complain about racism, that no, these institutions are racist, or this white person called me a kafur or a monkey or something like that. And there has to be the struggle somehow, you know? So I feel like the African People's Socialist Party is going to help us a lot here uh, in, in building the, the APSP, uh, like raising straight demands, you know? I, I'm sure there are white people here in South Africa who um, we see them, some, some of them, they just, think I'm just going to engage myself in some charity work and or something or take pictures with black children and then somehow, but we're going to give them direction to say, this is what you can do. You know, this is what, this is the real thing, you know? So there is no such thing. I have seen a lot of Pan-Africanists who just throw insults at white, white people and call them devils and all these kind of things, but they don't even have any, any demand. And then it, it ends up going to like, for example, we are in the townships, right? We don't really engage with white people a lot. Like, we don't engage. We don't even, sometimes, uh, we, we don't even think of sharing a, a table with them or anything like that, right? But then these, the same petty bourgeois, uh, African, pan-Africanists will go and party with white people. Uh, like, and they go to seminars with them, engage with them, they debate with them, but there's, there's no demand whatsoever. So I think, um, in 2023, um, the African Socialist Party occupied Zania will host the International Congress of the APSP, and I'm sure by then we will be uh, launching, either by then or before then, we have to launch the African People's uh, Solidarity Committee and the Uhuru Solidarity Movement here in occupied Zania. Uhuru. 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 <laughs> uh, let's fight against racism, boys. <laughs> 
it's, a, it's an amazing diversion. It has its own look all around the all around the world. It's chasing a white ghost. You know what I mean? Ah, oh, boy. How, where are we, comrade uh, Akile? So we have about five more minutes until we have to head into announcements. Is anybody else trying to come on to raise any issues or questions with this discussion? Yes, we're. We're to come in, Louise. Yeah, I just want to, uh, yeah, unite with uh, Chairman uh, um, of the APSP, Nazania Atafari. And uh, just uh, going back to this question of, uh, of uh, EFF. Uh, so basically, they are Pan Africans. You know, that's people we need to know. If you're looking for an example, one example, there are many, many, you know, uh, forms or, or uh, displays of, of an Africanism. Uh, EFF, uh, that's one of them. Uh, as we, we, we must be clear, the people need to know, fascist capitalism, basically colonialism, although we have neocolonialism, it cannot be reformed from the point of view, from the stand of the African working class. You can't. So neocolonialism, that's a reform of colonialism, but for the African petty bourgeoisie, nothing to do with us, with the people. You, you just can't reform it. And uh, so the criticism uh, Molema has of uh, the ADC is uh, a neocolonial criticism. So it, you know, is it, it can't uh, basically do a criticism from the stand of the African working class. It is uh, unable to do that. And uh, when we say criticism, uh, when we criticize at the ANC, we're criticizing uh, not just uh, the uh, African people, which is uh, uh, just one place, we're criticizing the whole history of opportunism. That's why from criticism of ANC, we go to Dubois versus Marcus Garvey. You know, we support uh, Mugabe against uh, white power, but we criticize Mugabe from the point of view of the African working class that he betrayed the revolution too. You see, uh, because he united with the AAU, African uh, Union, which is an opportunist uh, organization. It's just like when you're a scientist, you want to send a rocket to the moon, you can't be compromising because the rocket will never take off. And if it take off, it will never reach its goal. You need the right fuel, the right material, the right training. Everything has to be correct. Just like with the revolution, everything has to be correct, scientific, correct, so we can make the revolution. So no uh, 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 prisoners when it comes to uh, criticism of African free bourgeoisie. So he's a Pan-Africanist, and the Pan-Africanists love him. Yes, well. No compromise. No <laughs> surrender. Uh -huh. All right, so um, that is, we're about two minutes away from uh, where we need to be in terms of closing. So uh, I'll go ahead. We did have questions from some um, live viewers and um, while well, we, some, our moderator has been responding to those questions. Um, so I just wanted to um, let people know that we'll have to next week, you know, kind of weave into the, the live questions as well. Um, I know, but there's just so much um, that we can discuss and, you know, all the leaders on this call um, or in this conference right now um, just have so much to be able to contribute to this discussion. But just wanted to let everybody know that if your question was not answered and our moderator did not answer that, someone will respond to you and make sure that the chairman does see your question. And this study was brought to you by the Department of Agitation and Propaganda, winning the war of ideas. For your revolutionary news and analysis, visit theburningspear.com. Revolutionary radio, dynamic shows, and music by Africans all around the world. Tune into Black Power 96.3 FM, broadcasting out of St. Petersburg, Florida, and accessible via the Black Power 96 app for Apple and Android or online at blackpower96.org. If you're united with what you heard today and want to learn more about how you can get involved with the African People's Socialist Party, it's been expressed here in this um, study, but just want to, again, emphasize to go to APSPUhuru.org and join the African Revolution, join the African People's Socialist Party, join with these comrades and um, you know, fight for liberated United Socialist Africa. So um, again, that's APSPUhuru.org. And as you can see, we are located everywhere um, on the earth. So you can go there no matter where it is that you are and join the African Revolution.
Order your copy of Chairman Amalia Chatello's latest book, Vanguard, The Advanced Attachment of the African Revolution, The Political Report to the Seventh Congress. You can order your copy, as Sheila Wazy showed you what that looked like earlier, at burningspearmarketplace.com. And we have some events lined up for you today, as well as some future events. From 1 to 3 p.m. Eastern, the African National Women's Organization is hosting an event titled The Struggle Against Mass Incarceration's Impact on African Women, featuring a dynamic panel, including President Gedjede Odomila herself and comrade um, Malika Alexander, the Midwest Regional Representative for the African People's Socialist Party. You can tune into this webinar from 1 to 3 p.m. Eastern at facebook.com slash anwo, that's A-N-W-O, Uhuru. Following the um, following uh, the annual discussion will be um, the International People's Democratic Uhuru Movement holding their weekly Sunday rally themed the political and economic are one. Here will be showcased the anti-colonial economy that the Uhuru Movement is constructing. Speakers from throughout the movement will be present to discuss their economic development projects and what they're connected to forwarding. You can tune in today on the MPDUM Facebook page at 4 p.m. Eastern and that will um, include some of the panelists you hear um, you've seen today, as well as the leadership of the International People's Democratic Uhuru Movement, the international president, Columbia and the net. So again, that's 4 p.m. Eastern on the NPDUM Facebook page. On May 23rd and 24th, the African People's Socialist Party hosts African Liberation Day themed Up Ye Mighty Africans Forward to a United Socialist Africa. Be part of a dynamic conference, including powerful presentations from leaders of the African Liberation Movement, cultural presentations from talented artists and the way forward for our Africa, our African people and our political, social and economic liberation from white power imperialism. You can register today at ALDUhuru.org. The Black is Back Coalition for Social Justice, Peace and Reparations will host its fourth annual electoral campaign school on June 13th and 14th. Registration details for this event will be made available on blackisbackcoalition.org. The African National Women's Organization's uh, Black Women's Convention themed Sisters United for the Revolution is scheduled for July 10th through 12th and registration details can be found at anwelluhuru.org. And during this time of the COVID-19 pandemic, we are calling on people to follow closely the All African People's Development and Empowerment Project on Facebook or visit developmentforafrica.org. There there's important information, protocols, and helpful tips to help us navigate this time. And um, here, um, those protocols and those tips and that work that's being developed um, has been done under the leadership of Comrade Director Dr. Aisha Fields, um, who is the International Director of the All African People's Development and Empowerment Project, and you see her here today. And I just want to thank you all for tuning in. Make sure you like and subscribe to the Burning Spirit TV on YouTube to catch every episode of the Amali Taught Me Sunday Study. We'll catch you back here next Sunday, 8 a.m. Eastern Sharp. Uhuru. Mm -hmm.